Micro Center wants your GPU for pennies. YouTube wants you to give them the pennies. And then NVIDIA wants you to build a PC that's the size of a penny. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, April 17th, 2024. And today we're gonna start off talking about Micro Center's GPU trade-in program. Kyler, did you know they had this? I've never heard of this before. You gonna respond? You gave me less than a second. <laughs> <laughs> you need to be ready at all seconds. Yes, I knew they had that. When? How'd you know they had that? What are you talking about? Micro Center's GPU trade-in program? They've had that for a while, haven't they? Are you talking about Newegg? I'm thinking of Newegg. You're thinking of Newegg, which is part of the problem. And Micro Center offering pittance when it comes to the GPUs that you're going to trade in with them. So this is something that they want you to know about. They have been posting this on their website. And as of 11 days ago, they released this video on their YouTube channel. So the fact that you think that they've had it forever may be the case. But we just we actually did not know about it. But they want to pay people for their RTX 4090s. Guess how much money, Kyler? $60. 700 So it's a little bit better than that but when you compare it to other places that have an exact similar gpu trading program it is very little the rtx 4090 over on newegg can get 1500 dollars, and it currently sells for a used price of roughly 1800 bucks thanks to the fact that it is in such short supply thanks to you know market pressures all across the world but it appears that maybe micro center has a little bit of uh updating that they need to do when it comes to gpu trading programs how much they're going to give you for your card or uh, you will just accept it for the convenience of working with Micro Center. Let me know, does this affect your opinion on them that Newegg will give you a better deal than they will? Is that something that matters to you? I wanna hear from you down below in the comments while I let you know that I'm gonna give you as good of a deal as I've been giving you on today's video sponsor, Rare Brew Coffee. This is the coffee company that my wife and I launched in order to help raise money to cure our son's rare disease. With every bag you purchase, proceeds go to Syngap Research Fund to help advance treatments for Syngap 1, and it's delicious coffee as well. This is our Advocate blend, which is sourced from both Brazil and Ethiopia. It's a very delicious blend. I really like it. We've had a lot of coffee enjoyers, enthusiasts, snobs, some would call them, also enjoy this coffee. It's delicious coffee that comes in both whole bean as well as ground, and you can check it out at the link in the video description. And if you use code UFD10, you can save 10% off your first purchase of Rare Brew Coffee. Help us to support a good cause give yourself a little caffeine boost and we do have some plans in the pipeline of how we're going to be expanding and growing rare brew as time goes on it's been a phenomenal launch so far we have sold quite a number of bags of coffee it's been very beautiful to see how much money we've been able to donate to Syngap research fund and we are working to get different things in the pipeline such as different roasts as well as potentially even selling these coffee mugs right here so big thanks to me for sponsoring today's episode of hot news but maybe we'll need a few less sponsors on hot news moving forward because YouTube wants to make sure that ads are everywhere. Everybody gets them no matter how they try to avoid them, which could potentially mean I'll get a few more pence off of you. YouTube coming out saying that they're going to start enforcing differently on third-party apps to make sure that third-party apps that try to violate YouTube's terms of service by circumventing things like ad disbursement is no longer going to happen. You may remember back in 2022, they cracked down on a program known as YouTube Advanced, which was serving up all these videos without ads. YouTube having a big problem with that and is likely going to crack down on any sort of third-party app that does this to make sure that you are definitely getting served. I mean, somebody has to pay for the servers somehow. I'm not doing it. I don't give YouTube money to store my videos. I don't give them money to serve the videos to you. So this can result in a few errors that'll pop up. Either the video will be unavailable on the third-party platform that you're trying to view it on, or you will experience buffering issues that will make you probably want to rage quit and not watch the video any longer with YouTube saying that they're just trying to reward their creators and make sure that everything is supported appropriately. This likely means that an app that came after YouTube Vance, YouTube Revance, I think it was called, is likely going to start getting some issues with it. But YouTube d definitively cracking down on this. This makes a lot of sense, especially since the new CEO of YouTube is the former product lead for the ad program for YouTube. So it's at the top of mind of how they're going to choose to implement all of this. I 
get it. I think when I've seen most people's complaints that I would consider legitimate on this sector, it usually has to do with the fact that the ads are not vetted as well as the content actually is. So you're getting served up scams and issues and big problematic ads that should definitely be vetted a lot more closely by YouTube themselves. However, when it comes to like YouTube, until very recently it was not profitable like this is not something that they're making money hand over fist on they've had to actually exercise these imp implementations and restrictions to make sure more ads are being delivered in order to pay for all of the massive consumption that goes on on this platform it's just something to consider but while google doing something that people don't like when it comes to serving more ads this might be something you like google drive is getting a dark mode finally Woo! it looks like that yeah. I like this. It's the one, it's like one of the very few Google apps that I use regularly where my eyes get blasted. And now it now it doesn't have to be that way. It should be rolling out sometime soon. And I wonder if Reese's voice rolled out to him. Is it getting that? Probably not. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. I have somewhat of a voice again today, so let's go. Starting off today, we have the Elgato HT60X capture card going for only $137.49, making it $42.50 off. But then next up, we have this AOC 31.5 inch 4K 144Hz gaming monitor for only $389.99, making it $410 off. And then lastly, we have this beefy MSI Gaming Radeon RX 7900 XTX 24GB graphics card for only $799.99 when using the code and paying through zip, bringing your total to $230 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, Elon Musk has the deal of a lifetime for you. Are you not on Twitter yet? Good. Okay, because here's, here's what you get. You get to pay him to comment on tweets. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is a fee that Elon Musk is now effectively moving forward a lot more on when it comes to charging users in order to use the platform. When it comes to monetizing the site properly, as well as making sure that the AI chatbots are not as running rampant as they currently are. Elon Musk himself saying that they can now get past the are you a bot test and the only way to restrict it is to charge a nominal sum for anybody who's signing up to the platform new in order to make sure that they are not a bot. Whether or not this will roll out to existing users who don't pay for Twitter Blue or whatever the heck it's called, the verified program remains to be seen. Also, he's talked about this several times in the past, whether or not this is the one that's gonna stick and he's actually gonna choose to do it or he's gonna realize that people will just end up not commenting because they didn't pay the troll tax. So they're just not gonna part, they're gonna find another place to go do it or they're just not gonna engage at all. All of his business decisions have always worked out 100%. So I'm I'm throwing my full weight behind Elon on this one. And AMD is throwing their full weight behind AI. They're announcing their new Ryzen 8000 chips that have AI baked in. Yeah, that's right. You thought Ryzen 9000 was coming next? No, sir. We got Ryzen 8000. These are the Ryzen Pro 8040 series, which is based on the mobile chips that we've kind of already seen, but now are in a desktop form factor. But these are the first desktop chips that AMD's releasing that are going to have AI things things baked into them and they're fast, I guess. AMD showing off that you get a total system tops, which stands for tera or trillion operations per second, not tensor as some people in the comments might tell you, and that you get 39 of those when it comes to the new Ryzen Pro 8000 series, with 16 of them being dedicated from the neural processing unit. Intel on desktop gives you zero, they suck. Also on mobile, they only give you 34 on the Meteor Lake chips and they suck, but Intel has kind of already responded to this. They talked about Lunar Lake about a week ago discussing everything that they're going to be releasing with the next mobile gen platform that should be coming out sometime soon and that they're going to have over a hundred system tops for their next gen Lunar Lake chips. Additionally, 45 tops from the NPU alone, which supersedes whatever you're getting with the Ryzen 8000 desktop chip. This is just comparing apples to Cessna here. It just, it, a desktop chip versus what you're using the laptop for with an 8040. Are you really just using that where you're not gonna get a dedicated graphics card potentially, but like a neural processing unit that can do 40 tops when a regular desktop class card can far exceed that is, they gotta do it. They gotta do it to appease their shareholders. Everybody wants them in on AI. You gotta get all of the AI things that you want in all of the AI processors, but it's, it's AI, AI, whoa. -oh. What's popping tonight? 
But one of the things that NVIDIA is doing, which I actually am both in favor of, but also am questioning their motives, is that they are releasing guidelines when it comes to small form factor PCs. They have SFF enthusiast GeForce GPUs that should be coming out to the small form factor gaming ecosystem. This is something that is near and dear to my heart. This channel started with a small form factor build. I've built many across the years, and I absolutely love this. Cramming an RTX 4090 into a five liter case sounds ridiculous, and it is, but it's it's one of those things that I just view as a beautiful challenge. NVIDIA likely not going that route, and this is instead trying to make it so that the small form factor segment is more accessible and easy for consumers. Also, it's gonna be great for marketing. They're working with both graphics card makers, but also case manufacturers, power supply companies to come up with components that are perfect for SFF builds, which means that they likely will have a little badge. And that's good for letting you know this is NVIDIA certified, but it's also a, a growing market segment. It's something that I think a lot of people are intrigued by. Building smaller computers is definitely enjoyable, and I think a lot of people want that. And if there's this like ecosystem that can be built out for that, it can be helpful for those people, while NVIDIA is also making gigantic monstrosities of power consumption that likely can never go in these systems, they want you to be satisfied with the RTX 4060 and 4060 Ti. This also kind of feels like a push in that direction of like, hey, listen, listen, th these are good enough. Just th they'll go in small spaces. Be satisfied with these, even though the pricing doesn't make sense, even though we've cut down how it should be and it's it's just unreasonable in all the other ways. At least it fits in a small case. We'll have to see how this program rolls out exactly, but I am a small form factor, at least dabbler. I wouldn't call myself an enthusiast at this point, but I absolutely love keeping an eye on the space and I will continue to do so as Nvidia tries to roll out their little guidelines that are happening. And I'm gonna keep an eye on you and your comments. Kyler, you wanna help me with the comment response today? Or are you busy? You could help. Oh, we could help. I'm not gonna have a couple soda pops. Eben coming out and saying, now you stuck with me. Love it, had a good giggle. Then we got the amazing Moose Man saying backup voice was amazing. Actually, you don't continue the noise when it comes to exclamation points. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> Did you even watch Hot News? No. So you don't even know what the backup voice is? Not a clue. Okay, that's great. Uh, then we got Octagonal Square saying part 17 is only slightly a reaction. There's no stool over here anymore. You could leave one. What's this? Is this expensive? Uh, no, there's nothing in there. You sure? Yeah, it's in a system already. So I can drop it? Go ahead. Then we got J- Faked out, I caught it. <laughs> then we got J.I. Pillow saying, my favorite part of hot news is when you try to defend yourself from pedantic jackals. This is my nickname in high school. Yeah, well that's what we do here on Comment Response. It's one of the reasons why I've implemented this segment. I wanted to make sure that you pedantic jackals knew that you were being read and you could be responded to by another pedantic jackal because Here's the here's the the truth. A lot of us enjoy this because it we, we kind of have similar personalities as much as we don't want to think that. Except for you, I don't know what's up with you. I'm a pedantic jagoff. Oh, Pittsburgh, you enter mm -hmm. slang right Yo, there. Oh, You're yeah. also categorically unviable in an entertainment black hole. I don't know if you've noticed yes. that. Okay. That guy. I wonder if he ever still watches. Permanent scar <laughs> <laughs> on our psyches here. And we got THC saying, I hope you guys know that most comment section criticism and debate is meant to be constructive or innocuously rhetorical. You do an excellent job of presenting the news we are interested in and we appreciate you for it. I know, and that's why I do this. If I didn't, if I thought your comment was in bad faith, I wouldn't engage with it. Thank you, Seed Salute. And we got Danny saying, watch the channel getting flagged for talking about emulators. Please don't. Yeah, you've been, uh, you've been putting a lot of documents in to the to the to the shorts manifesto we've got going on yeah that are about nintendo and emulation and i'm afraid of them yeah no that's fair <laughs> but i've i've taken it from the angle of i'm not going to say anything about anything besides that they are here and right. we will still get taken down uh ufd tech going down next week just wait i'm yelling timber you better move you better dance. This was a mistake. Mm -hmm. All right, I should have done this yeah, long. Fair. We'll see you back here you for more tech news tomorrow, guys. <laughs> what are you doing in the I wanted, coffee? I wanted to like knock it over, but I don't want to knock the mug over too. It's not that hard. It just slides right off. These bags are sleek. 